Hello, Royal Brothers, Royal Sisters. Welcome to Royal Power for Greatness, where you're empowered to walk in your great destiny in Christ without apologies. Royal Power for Greatness is brought to you by Royal Brothers, Royal Sisters. It's the world's first global one-on-one -on -one Christian and professional mentorship network for all youth and young adults across the body of Christ worldwide. My name is Wesley Ogude. If you are a youth, born again, or young adult anywhere in the world, I am your royal brother, you are my royal brother, you are my royal sister. But if you're wondering there, what is royal brother, royal sister, what does it mean to be born again, it will suggest to me that you are yet to become a member of God's amazing royal family. I make a promise to you that I will give you the opportunity someone gave me several years ago that changed my life at the end of this conversation. In today's episode of Royal Power for Greatness, I am very excited to bring you episode number 25. And that episode is titled, Seven Keys to Effective Communication in Marriage, Part 1. Remember, this is a conversation, so please send me your questions, your thoughts, and comments to me at rbrs at royalyouthforchrist.com. I will make time to address your questions and comments. You can also reach out to us um, if you want to become part of our dynamic team of youth and young adults uh, across different countries and continents. Um, you can serve, you can join us and serve the body of Christ, youth and young adults from anywhere in the world. Just um, get across to us um, at rbrs at royalyouthforchrist.com dot com and um, somebody from our team will um, get across to you also please uh, uh, remember to subscribe to all our, our channels and share this link particularly with your friends and families youth and young adults who are in your space now in this uh, three-part episode episode we would be answering three questions the first question we will be addressing here is what is the 3d model of effective communication in marriage there is a model called 3d model of effective communication in marriage what is it number two question what are the seven keys to effective communication in marriage and then number three how can I apply these seven keys to improve my marriage now, if you're already married, or in future, if you are yet to marry? Let's just make a few opening comments. According to um, Miles Morrow of Blessed Memory, precious gems are rare, so is a genuine marriage. A genuine marriage is one that is characterized by very healthy communication among other things. Now, whether you are married or single, this episode is super critical. In fact, if you are yet to be married or you are newly married, you are at an advantage listening to this particular conversation. Um, why? Because you, can, you have an opportunity to get it right from the start and save yourself a lifetime of stress. By God's grace and to the glory of Jesus Christ, I have been married for just a few 29 years, but very happy years. And I've been having the opportunity to study and to teach and to counsel on marriage for over 30 years. Yes, even before I got married, it's been a subject that's, very, that's been very intriguing to me. So I know how critical communication is in marriage, experientially and through um, a few years of, uh, of counseling and teaching. Like any relationship, effective communication is the life wire of a successful marriage. Once communication breaks down in a marriage, it is a question of time. The marriage is headed for trouble and may eventually end. That is how important communication is in marriage. So, as I had mentioned um, on this channel, no relationship can work 
um, or talk less of thrive without effective communication. You name that kind of relationship, whether it is between, you know, business partners, between employer and employees, among, you know, team members, between maybe, you know, two friends or in a family, communication is key. Um, once communication breaks down, the relationship will come crumbling like a pack of cards. The impact of effective communication in a marriage is more serious than any other type of relationship. Why? Because the husband and wife relationship is the most intimate human relationship than any other type of relationship. And so, you know, the impact of, of communication is super critical. You have also heard me quote John C. Maxwell, um, who says that leadership has a twin sister. Her name is communication. So as a man, if you want to lead your home, you have to keep the communication channel between you and your spouse very healthy. Poor communication is certainly one of the seven killers of marriage, as we saw in the series that we concluded on the seven killers of marriage. If you have not you know, watch that um, episode, Seven Killers of Marriage, How to Avoid Them. I strongly recommend that you go to our YouTube uh, channel to watch them. So let's um, address those three questions. The first question we're going to address is, what is the 3D model of effective communication in marriage? So by 3D model, we mean that there are three Ds. They stand for the following. Number one, discuss. Number two, defer. Number three, delete. What do we mean by that? There are certain things in marriage, okay, as far as communication is concerned, that must be discussed. You can't delay them. You can't drag them. You can't, you know, linger, you know, around them. You've got to discuss those things. Uh, particularly, even before you get into marriage, there are certain things that must have been discussed. Um, discussing those things in marriage, when, when you have already said, I do, it's, it's already too late. On this channel, by God's grace, I uh, will be focusing on teaching on, you know, courtship and things like that and, and, and so on and so forth. So discuss, that's the first D. The second one is defer, defer. There are certain things that need to be discussed as far as communication is concerned, but you need to defer them. You can't just jump into them. You need to, you know, as we go into the conversation, you will, you will get it clearer. You, you have to discuss them, but you need to defer the conversation. You need to defer it, and you will, understand, you will understand why as we go along. And then the third one is delete. Those are the three Ds. So there are things you discuss in marriage. There are things you defer, and there are things you just delete. It's not worth it. Just put it in the garbage. So let's go for the first, uh, the first uh, question. So in this episode, out of those three Ds, we will discuss the first one, which is discuss. Okay, so let's look at it. In a healthy marriage, there are things that must be discussed. They can't be delayed and they can't be deferred and they can't be deleted. If you don't disclose or discuss them on time, they will create serious damages. This is, this is critical to ensure that you and your spouse are well aligned. In Amos chapter 3, verse 3, in the expanded Bible, EXB, the scripture says, two people will not work together unless they have agreed to do so. See that? Or to mix. Or on the direction. So, so in marriage, day to day, what do we mean? What are the examples of those things that you need to discuss? Day to day communication, your routine, when you are going to work, when are you coming back? And, you know, you know, I want to stop over. I want to, you know, I want to buy grocery. I want to, you know, discuss weekly, monthly routine decisions that affect the two of you, your schedule, your time, your money, your resources. Okay. Those are examples. Then decisions that may affect your future your home, your finances, your children, okay? That's an, uh, those are other examples of things you need to discuss. Plan, okay? The plan that you are thinking about, okay, as a spouse in a, in a marriage relationship. You can't just think about something and just take a decision and just move on. No, from the moment you start thinking about it, you start bouncing it off uh, your spouse so that, you know, both of you can, uh, can, can, can be on the same page. You know, there have been very ridiculous you know um stories about couples who 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 violate this this principle okay a good example is um, the new york governor right 
um, a New York governor announced a divorce in a press conference without even discussing with the wife. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Somebody just, you know, imagine somebody, a lady, somebody calling you saying, Oh, I'm sorry to hear about your divorce. You say, divorce for what? You say, oh, your, your husband just get, gave a press, a press announcement that is divorcing you. Can you imagine that trauma? It really happened. True life story. That is an example of the violation of this first D. So you need to discuss. We also have cases of people who want to pull surprise on their spouse. You went and, you know, <laughs> you didn't discuss that you want to relocate with your spouse. You just went and took your spouse's, uh, you know, uh, credentials and all of those things and applied for permanent residency. You want to surprise your spouse. And before you knew it, boom, you just came and just say, hey, baby, here. So what is that? Oh, visa. We are re relocating relocating to Canada or relocating to, uh, you know, New Zealand. No, you don't do such things in marriage, okay? Even when God calls you to a mission or a ministry, by God's grace, when God called me to this very privileged, you know, work that I'm doing in the body of Christ, my wife and I, you know, one of the things that I told God was I needed God to, you know, to, to, to also give my wife, you know, an understanding of what he was calling me to. And so we took time to pray together. And then um, by the time I asked her, it, 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 it didn't look like something that was palatable then because there were too many questions, okay? How are we going to get the finances? How are we going to, you know, we didn't start like this. You know, we had no idea, you know. We started praying, uh, but, you know, she came on board. And the, uh, like they say, the rest is history, okay? So even your calling, okay, make sure that you are, you know, when God calls you, you may be a pastor listening or somebody who is in ministry or in Bible college and you're listening to this conversation. You need to carry your spouse along. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, that God is not the author of confusion. Okay, so let's go to the next question. What are the seven keys to effective communication in marriage? Okay, before we do that, Let's take a quick break and get a quick message from our sponsor, RBRS. Don't go away. I'll be back shortly. Mentors encourage and enable their mentees' personal and spiritual development. Royal Youth for Christ International Fellowship, RYFC, the world's first Christian and professional one-on-one -on -one mentorship program called Royal Brothers Royal Sisters, RBRS. RBRS is a life-transforming, goal-based one-on-one mentorship program for youth and young adults in the body of Christ across churches, cities, and nations. RBRS aims to empower Christian youth and young adults with the living word of faith and offer focused guidance that will lead them to develop their potential, fulfill their destinies of greatness in Christ Jesus, and effectively impact their generations with the power of the gospel. The mentorship relationship will be built around six key areas from which each mentee can set their mentorship goals. An intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, outstanding career success, talent development and entrepreneurial abilities, preparing for and building a blissful marriage, outreach and missions, and leadership development. To learn more and apply to become a mentor or a mentee, visit us at royalyouthforchrist.com forward slash RBRS. Welcome back. So we wanted to go into our second question. The second question is, what are the seven keys of effective communication in marriage? Okay, what are those seven keys? Okay, now, anytime you have a key to a particular door, you don't struggle with the door that you have the key to unless you choose not to apply the key. So I need you to pay attention to um, some of these uh, keys as I share them with you. They were, they were insights that were passed, graciously passed on to us, my wife and I, before we got married by our mentors. And I am forever, eternally grateful to our mentors who taught us this thing. It saved us a lot of stress. So please pay attention. So what are the seven um, seven keys. Now, these keys require wisdom to apply them, but they are all based on one word, only one word from the word of God. That word is called 
choice 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 as you can see as you would see shortly okay so what are the, the seven keys number one key is the choice of your word okay before we get into that in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15 in the easy to read uh, version of the Bible ERV the scripture says today I have given you watch this a choice between life and death success and disaster so God didn't even impose success on them God didn't say well I figured it out success is good for you so here you go I've made up I've made your decision for you success no God said choose choose what is the implication of that the implication of that is that in marriage you can actually choose you can choose to communicate the right way following these principles and you can choose not to communicate that way if you choose to communicate following these principles that are grounded in the word of god you will experience life success i just told you 29 years of blissful marriage to the glory of the almighty god i don't have an idea what stress looks like in marriage between my wife and i baby i love you i don't know what my life would have been without you i love you baby you know 29 years of blissful marriage right and one of the keys to that to, to this testimony of our of our own marriage is is communication so there are seven keys number one the choice of your word that's number one in communication in marriage the choice of your word is one key number two the choice of your tone very important number three the choice of your timing of your words the choice of your timing you can choose you know when to communicate now choosing it wisely will affect the outcome of your communication that's number three the choice of your timing of your word that's number three number four the choice of your body language when you communicate the choice of your body language very important that's number four number five the choice of your location where you where you speak where you choose to speak to your spouse speaking to your spouse i don't want to jump ahead of myself but speaking to your your spouse publicly and loudly and angrily before other people is a no-no in marriage never never in marriage okay so the choice of the location where you speak we'll see that as i unpack this with the help of the holy spirit you know number six the choice of your mood when you speak okay well the choice of your mood you can choose to speak when your mood is right you can choose not to speak when your mood is not the best but you can choose to go ahead and speak anyway but it, you will get different outcomes okay so the choice of your mood when you speak is number six and then number seven the choice of the extent to which you speak on an issue okay the extent to which you speak on an issue is a choice you can continue to speak on an issue and forever you don't want to let go of it or you can choose to address it and move on that will affect the nature of communication and the quality of marriage that you eventually end up with okay so immature couples don't pay attention to these seven keys of effective communication in marriage what happens what is the outcome they pay very dearly for it interestingly some of them do you know pay attention to some of these things when they are communicating with outsiders maybe their boss or their friends they watch their tone they pick their words carefully but when it comes to the marriage their spouse they don't do that well that's not smart okay that's a misplacement of divine priority our spouse as you have heard me share on this channel your spouse should be the next most important person to you only next to god for me my wife is the most important person in my in my entire life only next to god my wife and my children and then all other people that of course we all love very dearly okay now so what are the seven keys of effective communication in marriage in this first part i want to focus on two of them in this first part i will focus on the choice of your word and the choice of your tone in part two and part three we will cover the rest okay now let's focus on the choice of your word okay in scripture there are what the scripture called hard words or hard language 
and there is what is called soft answer. In Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 5, NKJV, the scripture says, For you are not sent to a people of unfamiliar speech, and watch this, and of hard language, but to the house of Israel. So there's one thing called hard language in scripture. Hard language in, in marriage, using hard language, hard words, you know, um, using uh, words that are very derogatory, words that can be hurtful. Those are what is called hard words, okay? In marriage, to communicate effectively, you need to avoid those kind of words. You need to avoid those kind of words, okay? You need to use words that are tender, words that are loving, words that are gracious, okay? Even when you are upset, even when you are angry. In my own marriage, for example, right from when we were cutting, we set the ground rule. So if you haven't done that, if you have not set the ground rule about mis communication and, and, and misunderstanding in your marriage, please do that. What do I mean by setting ground rule? We told ourselves we will never use certain words. Never. In about 29 years that I've married my wife, there are certain words that have never, never come out of my mouth to my wife and vice versa. So that's what we mean by the choice of your word. So in the Amplified Bible, um, for example, Proverbs chapter 15 verse 1, Amplified says, a soft, watch this, a soft and gentle and thoughtful answer turns away wrath, but harsh and painful and, watch this, careless words stir up anger. Some folks are very careless in their marriage. They use just about any word that comes into their mouth. They use it, you know, when they are angry. No, no boundaries at all. Such marriages um, are at risk, okay, as far as communication is concerned because they are violating some of these principles from the Word of God. Okay, so the choice of, you know, of using harsh you know, careless words in marriage is very costly when you make such choices, okay? Most couples start well in, their, in the spring. You know, we talked about four seasons of, of marriage in another, you know, conversation we had. If you haven't watched that, I really strongly recommend that you please go back to our channel and go and watch it. You know, it's a two-part series, four seasons of marriage. So in spring, some people, spring is when, you know, couples are just starting out. You know, some people use kind words. They call themselves honey, okay. They call themselves sweetie. They come at this and all, you know, and things like that. They are polite. The guy opens door for the, for the lady. You know, that's in spring. Then as time, as time goes on, they begin to take them, their, each other for granted. Begin to be, you know, use words that they shouldn't be using and things like that, okay? Others have anger problem before marriage, which they imported wholesale into the marriage. They suppress it at the beginning of the marriage until after the honeymoon season is over. Then they begin to wonder why their marriage is not working. You can't do that, okay? You can't do that. All through the, 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 the marriage, you know, <laughs> my wife is as dear to me as the first night, the first night I wedded her. Baby, I love you, okay? There's nothing, nothing, nothing I can do in this world without you. I love you, I love you. So respecting your spouse, appreciating your spouse, using kind words, affirming, uh, you know, um, affirming your spouse are uh, some of the choices you can make, okay? And then number two, we're talking about, you know, still talking about, you know, um, effective communication is the choice of your tone. It's the choice of your tone, you know? Okay, in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 19, in the NKJV, the scripture says, better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an, an angry woman. Angry tone, okay? Of course, anger is an emotion that we all share. Even Jesus, God himself gets angry. So it's not the anger that is the issue, but it's the way we, uh, we express it. We don't allow anger to to take over us and we lose control. It's a very dangerous to do in marriage, okay? Proverbs chapter 29, verse 22, in, in the New Catholic Bible, NCB, the scripture says, a bad-tempered man provokes quarrels. Can you see that? And a hot head, the Bible calls such a man a hot head, commits a lot of offenses. You know, just 
you know, with a little provocation, you just let all caution to the wind and begin to say all sorts of things, not being mindful how those words are landing on your spouse and the impact. There are certain words that could be very completely damaging, you know, speaking derogatory words or insinuating or, or even sending words, insults to your, your spouse's parents. And, oh, my father, those things are deadly in marriage communication. You should sit with your spouse and say, never, we are not going to do those kind of thing. Okay. Now in, 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 in her book called Executive Presence, EP, Silva Hewlett writes that our research confirms that high pitch voice, especially for women, is a career stunting attribute. Okay. If you do that in the office, it can stunt your career high pitch. You can imagine in the office, your boss talks to you or you go into a, a meeting as an executive and then you just raise your voice and, you know, get angry. That can end your career. Okay. Now, some people are careful when it comes to career, but when, it, when they get home, they, they throw caution to the wind. So if it can stunt, if it is a career stunting attribute, certainly, just like Siva Hewlett said, it is also a a, a marriage stunting attribute. So it's a killer of marriage to use, you know, um, the, the, the wrong tone. The Amplified Bible in Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1 says, the wise woman builds a house, watch this, on a foundation of godly precepts. Precepts are these kind of things we're sharing here. A household thrives. Can you see that? But the foolish one who lacks spiritual insight, that all of these things that we are sharing here are spiritual insight. Like I said to you, <laughs> our mentors shared these things with us before we got married. And that's why my wife and I, we feel so indebted to the younger generation to also share it. It's the word of God, it's the light that we got from our mentors. So that spiritual insight, some people lack it. They will not watch something like this. They would rather be on, you know, and watch movie. Or it's good to watch movie, but you should also get some spiritual content and insight that could help you guide your marriage like we did several years ago and we continue to do up to today. Okay, the scripture says here, but the foolish one who lacks spiritual insight tears it down, that is, tear her house down with her own hands by ignoring godly principles. Please let's not ignore this principle. Choice of tone, choice of word. The wrong choice of tone has killed many marriages. It will not kill yours in Jesus' name. If you are married, and if you are not yet married, when you get married, by God's grace, you, this kind of wrong choice, a wrong tone, a wrong choice of words will not kill your marriage in Jesus' name. So how can I apply this? Okay, these seven keys to improve my marriage now or in future. Let's quickly go there. Okay, let's talk about how you can apply the choice of your words. Okay, the choice of your words. Okay, let's look at three practical ways that we can, we can apply it. Okay, now they said this, a compliment a day keeps the divorce attorney away. A compliment a day keeps the divorce attorney away. Okay, as I was, you know, talking about this message, you can hear me sending some, you know, vibes to my, to my, to my baby. That's my wife. Okay, so one of the ways you can, you can do this is to speak affectionate words on a regular basis. We've been married now to the glory of the Almighty God for about 29 years, but I still express affection towards my wife. I still call her baby and she calls me, you know, um, you know, a, a pet name and things like that. So that's one way. Okay. Constant, constantly appreciating what your spouse is doing well every day. Give sincere affirmation and remember to tell him or her how much you love him or her and how much he or she means to you. If you don't, who will? That's the question. If I don't tell my wife that I love her, who do I expect to tell her? Her boss? God forbid. Okay? So you need to, okay? That's one way you can, you can deliberately and intentionally choose kind words, affirmative words, in fact, romantic words, and speak to your, your spouse on a daily basis. Your spouse is God's amazing gift to your life. Enjoy that gift. Okay? Now, what if you've missed it? You have not been doing that. Okay? Now, uh, we all miss it in marriage some, sometimes. There is no perfect individual in marriage, okay? I have missed it many, many, many times. Thank God for my, 
my beautiful wife who is so gracious to forgive me and vice versa okay so if i've missed it what should i do some practical step begin with praying confessing and repenting if you have missed it in proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 the voice version of the bible the scripture says Whoever tries to hide his sin will not succeed. Did you see that? But the one who confesses his sin and leaves them behind will find mercy. You know, if, so that's the way to start. Even after listening to this conversation, if the Holy Spirit kind of nudges you in the heart to say, that's me they are talking about, it's not to condemn you at all. There's no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. So no condemnation. But God is calling us, using his word to cleanse our hearts. I want you to respond. Begin with praying, confessing and repenting and asking God to forgive you if you are, if you find yourself you know in, in in any of these things that we talked about um okay that's number one way to do that you can go right on your knees or at the end of this conversation and pray that prayer and then number two humbly approach your spouse to apologize and make a new commitment you know we do this my wife and i we do this from time to time you know maybe i heard a word you know, somebody shared a testimony or something very inspiring about a, a marriage and I, I'm not doing it. I'll just go to my wife and, you know, at times it, it, I kneel down for her to apologize and she does the same thing. Hey guys, it doesn't take anything away from you. They don't win medal for you know they don't they don't nobody gives you a medal for winning argument with your wife nobody gives you medal at all and nobody gives you medal you know for for stressing your wife nobody will admire you for for uh, you, you won an argument with your wife okay there is a saying that that says that you win the argument you lose the heart i would rather have my wife's heart i don't care let me lose the argument what what is it going to cost me anyway so humble yourself to approach your spouse to apologize and make a new commitment. That's another way you can apply this kind of principle and say in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, in the Common English Version, CEV, the scripture says, all of you young people should obey your elders. In fact, everyone should be humble towards everyone else, including your spouse. That's the word of God. The scripture says, God opposes proud people, but he helps everyone who is humble. Okay? Okay? Now, if you see any marriage that is thriving, where the husband and the wife, you know, they are having a great time, very tantalizing, I can guarantee you those are two people who are humble. Because in marriage, there will always be instances where you miss it, where you have to go back and ask for the forgiveness of your spouse, and where you also have to give for forgiveness as well. So, humble yourself to apologize and make a new commitment. Number three, renew your mind more regularly with God's word and less garbage. You know, so the words that we speak is usually an expression of what is inside us. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay, so whatever you have been feeding into your ears, your ears and your eyes are the window into your soul. Okay, those things go to sit there and after some time, you now, you reproduce them. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 35, the scripture says in the New International Reader's Version, N-I-R-V, a good man, okay, says good things, okay. This come, this come from the good that is stored up inside him an evil man says evil things this also the this comes from the evil that is stored up inside so if you want to say gracious things loving things now you need to put in gracious things loving things good report the word of god like a beautiful you know conversation like this like you are listening to it can renew your mind and then you can go back to your spouse and begin to demonstrate some of the things that you have learned okay so how can i apply you know uh, these seven principles again the next one is which we cover here the two we cover the choice of your tone okay here are three practical ways practice self-restraint 
by resisting the urge to yell. You know, when we are challenged, where we are frustrated, we're all human beings, there is a tendency for us to want to yell, okay? It is very disrespectful and immature in marriage to do that. In Proverbs chapter 25, verse 8, 28, in the message translation of the Bible, the scripture says, a person without self-control, watch this, is like a door, is like a house with its door and windows knocked down. Can you, be, can you imagine that? A house that the door and the window knocked down. That is the person that has no control. If the door and the window of a house is knocked down, if you live in the part of the world where I live and it is winter, you are terribly in problem. You can't, you can't live in that kind of a house because it will be chilly. That's the same thing when a person lacks self-control and could just, you know, yeah, you know, just lash out with any kind of tone to the, to the wife. If you raise your voice, you know, which is possible, you know, Apologize to your to your to your um, to your spouse. So practice self restraint by resisting the urge to yell. Number two practical way is to practice. You watch me say practice. These things don't come naturally. Okay, I've been married, like I said, for about twenty nine years. Well, the way our marriage is today is not the way it was. You no, know, twenty years ago, fifteen years ago. Today, by God's grace, we have practice and practice and practice. You know, when I speak and I'm raising my voice. When my wife gives me a particular look, I know, oh, baby, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to raise my voice, right? So that's part of the practice. Practice self-reflection. You can tell your, your spouse, if I'm raising my voice, just give me this sign or something like this. Give me this sign. When I hear this sign, I know that mm, that is like red light. You are raising your voice or whatever other language that you guys want to use to practice. But it requires practice. It doesn't come naturally. So practice ref self-reflection to better understand your cues. You practice self self-reflection to understand where what are the what when are the times I'm likely to yell on what issues for example some people yell when it comes to the issue of money okay when it comes to the issue of money some women are very protective of children when they are talking about children they get emotional or some people some men talk when they are talking about you know maybe their job or whatever so you need to study yourself and see you know what kind of at what time some is when they come back from work or when they want to go to bed or when they are tired. Okay, learn to pour out, number three, learn to pour out your frustration to God in prayer. That's the person that can change your spouse, not you. In Psalm 4 verse 4, the scripture says, complain if you must, but don't lash out. Keep your mouth shut. I need that. Keep your mouth shut. Let your heart do the talking. Okay, build, build your case before God and wait for his verdict. Let's begin to now wrap this up. Um, so in this first um, part of, you know, seven keys to effective communication, we talked about the, the 3D model. Uh, we talked about what is the 3D model of effective communication. What are the seven keys? We went through the keys, we covered two. How can I apply it? We also covered how we can apply two of them. Um, I promise, to give a set of people an opportunity to know Jesus Christ. I want to keep my promise. If you have no relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ or you got saved some time ago, but you, you, you went back, you know, meaning you backslid it, I, I don't condemn you at all. You know, we are all sinners saved by grace, okay? Heaven is made up of what the, the people that the scripture says, the, you know, the spirit of just men made perfect, okay? So we are all men that have been flawed only grace. So it will be my honor to lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ today. Um, I made that decision on the 19th of July 1987 and my life changed forever. Please pray this prayer with me if you are in such a position. Okay, say Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. I believe you died for me and rose on the third day. I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. If you pray, pray that prayer um, sincerely, I believe with my whole heart that you got born again. Now, I want you to please identify a Bible-believing church near you and become part of a living church. Okay, there is no orphan in the body. We all belong to a local church, including myself. Get into that Bible-believing church uh, prayerfully. Also, please go to our website, www.royalyouthforchrist.com. Click on RBRS 
and then click on RBRS Convert. Complete that form and someone from our team will be in touch with you so that we can, you know, further, you know, help you as we uh, be part of your amazing journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. This will bring us to the end of this particular episode and uh, please don't forget every other Wednesday we are releasing a new episode. So this episode number, the second part of this seven keys of effective communication in marriage will follow. Watch out for it until I come your way next time. I'm your royal brother, Wesley Ogude. I love every one of you. God bless you. Mentors encourage and enable their mentees' personal and spiritual development. Royal Youth for Christ International Fellowship, RYFC, the world's first Christian and professional one-on-one -on -one mentorship program called Royal Brothers Royal Sisters, RBRS. RBRS is a life-transforming, goal-based one-on-one mentorship program for youth and young adults in the body of Christ across churches, cities, and nations. RBRS aims to empower Christian youth and young adults with the living word of faith and offer focused guidance that will lead them to develop their potential, fulfill their destinies of greatness in Christ Jesus, and effectively impact their generations with the power of the gospel. The mentorship relationship will be built around six key areas from which each mentee can set their mentorship goals. An intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, outstanding career success, talent development and entrepreneurial abilities, preparing for and building a blissful marriage, outreach and missions, and leadership development. To learn more and apply to become a mentor or a mentee, visit us at royalyouthforchrist.com forward slash RBRS.